Well, we're here at Titanic Belfast in Northern Ireland for the launch of your blockbuster movie Titanic in 3D on Blu-ray. Why launch it in Titanic Belfast? Now that the museum exists and is so uh, amazing a venue, uh, bringing in the international press and having it take place here, I think really resonated with them as well. Adds so much more sort of power to the, to the story of what we're all doing here. So you described Titanic Belfast as amazing. What was it that uh, in particular caught your attention? Well, I don't think I really appreciated the scale of the project. Uh, you know, that, that spans, you know, the, the dry docks and the slipways and then the, the whole museum and, and uh, you know, this is such a dramatic structure of the museum itself. I sort of expected it to be similar to the other Titanic displays I've seen, which, you know, honor the history and the passengers and all that. And that's all done here and done very well and, and imaginatively. But there's a whole other dimension that has to do with Belfast's particular role. We felt the weight of history as we went around, to, to, to go to the dry dock where Titanic was and Olympic was and so many other ships and to, and to really begin to get a sense of the scale of what was built here. To go to the Harlan and Wolf offices and to the drawing room where the architects designed these ships. You've made a donation of some movie props to Titanic Belfast. Right. What was the logic behind that? These props are sitting around my office or a warehouse at, at Fox, the costumes, the uh, ship's wheel was in, uh, was in my office. It's better for it to be out there where people can see it. This museum um, celebrates the history, reminds us of the history, the lessons of history, which we, which we should never forget. It's better for the thousands of people that will come through here to see these things than for them to kind of languish. Belfast was the home of William McQuitty, who arguably produced the first Titanic blockbuster in A Night yeah. to Remember. Yeah. Did uh, his work influence yours in any way? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I watched it and I realized what a great human story was innate in the, in the historical story of Titanic. And it just, it just flashed through my mind. I could, I could do a Titanic story in color with all the modern visual effects that we could do to, to evoke the, uh, the sinking uh, with great technical accuracy, and we could surround it with the story of the discovery of the wreck or searching you know, archaeologically through the wreck site and how powerful that would be. And then the next cognitive leap that happened almost right away was, it's got to be a love story. That all occurred to me very, very quickly in a short period of time, just having watched uh, Night to Remember. I heard you describe the ship <laughs> as having an Irish soul. What did you mean by that? There's an Irish character in the film that, that, uh, that says, uh, you know, 14,000 Irishmen built this ship. I can't do the accent. He does it much better than I do. But, um, you know, I, I wanted to have in the, in the movie just, you just touch that, uh, that idea of the kind of the pride of the, of the workmanship and the craftsmanship. In 100 years' time, will the world still be talking about Titanic? I, I think, you know, the tragedy of Titanic from history will be remembered forever.